Hi, welcome back. Today we are reading for March 21st, 2022. We'll be reading out of Numbers 24 and 25, Luke 1, 57 through 2, verse 20, Psalm 58, and Psalm 91. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Luke 2, 8. Consider the shepherds in this verse. They were just doing their work, walking in daily obedience. Nothing unusual at all. Then suddenly, the unexpected. God interrupted their everydayness with his master plan. What about you, daughter of God? Does your life feel a little humdrum at times? Well, get ready. If you're walking in obedience to the Lord, he might just interrupt your humdrumness with a life-changing adventure. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today with humble hearts and humble minds. We ask that you permeate this entire study. We desire to be closer to you, Lord, to be obedient to you and your word. Bless us, be with our loved ones wherever they may be. Holy Spirit, I invite you in to do what only you can do. Hallelujah, praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In your precious name we pray, amen. What are your top three priorities today? What's on your schedule to-do list? Write it down so you don't forget anything. What are your reflections on our... Bible reading after we read it today. What do you want to remember from March 21st, 2022? And how are you doing with your water drinking? Are you doing a lot enough water intake? Healthy foods? Are you nourishing your body with healthy foods and exercising? Are you getting enough movement? Okay, let's start off with numbers 24 and 25. Numbers 24 and 25. Now, when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he did not resort to sorcery as at other times, but turned his face toward the desert. When Balaam looked out and saw Israel encamped tribe by tribe, tribe by tribe, the spirit of God came upon him and he uttered his oracle. The oracle of Balaam, son of Beor, the oracle of one whose eye sees clearly, the oracle of one who hears the words of God, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who falls prostrate, prostrate and whose eyes are opened. How beautiful are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel. Like valleys that they spread out, like gardens beside a river, like aloes planted by the Lord, like cedars beside the waters. Water will flow from their buckets. Their seed will be will have abundant water. Their king will be greater than Agag. Their kingdom will be exalted. God brought them out of Egypt. They have the strength of a wild ox. They devour hostile nations and break their bones in pieces. With their arrows, they pierce them. Like a lion, they crouch and lie down. Like a lioness who dares to rouse them. May those who bless you be blessed and those who curse you be cursed. Then Balak's anger burned against Balaam. He struck his hands together and said to him, I summon you to curse my enemies, but you have blessed them three times. Now leave me at once and go home. I said I would reward you handsomely, but the Lord has kept you from being rewarded. Balaam answered Balak, did I not tell you the messenger you sent me? Even if Balak gave me his palace filled with silver and gold, I could not do anything of my own accord, good or bad, to go beyond the command of the Lord. And I must say only what the Lord says. Now I'm going back to my people, but come, let me warn you of what this people will do to your people in the days to come. Balak's fourth oracle, verse 15. 
I'm sorry, Balaam's, not Balak's, Balaam's fourth oracle. Then he uttered his oracle. The oracle of Balaam, son of Beor, the oracle of one whose eyes sees his eye sees clearly, the oracle of one who hears the words of God, who has knowledge from the Most High, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who falls prostrate and whose eyes are opened. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. He will crush the foreheads of Moab, the skulls of all the sons of Sheth. Edom will be conquered. Seir, his enemy, will be conquered. But Israel will grow strong. A ruler will come out of Jacob and destroy the survivors of the city. Then Balaam saw Amalek and uttered his oracle. Amalek was first among the nations, but he will come to ruin at last. Then he saw the Kenites and uttered his oracle. Your dwelling place is secure. Your nest is set in a rock. Yet you Kenites will be destroyed when Asher takes you captive. Then he uttered his oracle. Ah, who can live when God does this? Ships will come from the shores of Kittim. They will subdue Asher and Eber, but they too will come to ruin. Then Balaam got up and returned home and Balak went his own way. Chapter 25. While Israel was staying in Shittim, the men began to indulge in sexual immorality with Moabite women who invited them to the sacrifices to them to the sacrifices to their gods. The people ate and bowed down before these gods. So Israel joined in worshiping the ball of Peor and the Lord's anger burned against them. The Lord said to Moses, take all the leaders of these people, kill them and expose them in broad daylight before the Lord so that the Lord's fierce anger may turn away from Israel. So Moses said to Israel's judges, each of you must put to death those of your men who have joined in worshiping Baal of Peor. Then an Israelite man brought to his family a Midianite woman right before the eyes of Moses and the whole assembly of Israel while they were weeping at the entrance to the tent of meeting. When Phineas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw this. He left the assembly, took a spear in his hand, and followed the Israelite into the tent. He drove the spear through both of them, through the Israelite and into the woman's body. Then the plague against the Israelites was stopped, but those who died in the plague numbered 24,000. The Lord said to Moses, Phineas, Son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned my anger away from the Israelites, for he was a zealous, he was as zealous as I am for my honor among them, so that in my zeal I did not put an end to them. Therefore, tell him I am making my covenant of peace with him. He and his descendants will have a covenant of lasting priesthood, because he was zealous for the honor of his God and made atonement for the Israelites." The name of the Israelite who was killed with the Midianite woman was Zimri, son of Salu, the leader of the Simeonite family. And the name of the Midianite woman who was put to death was Kazbi, daughter of Zer, a tribal chief of a Midianite family. The Lord said to Moses, treat the Midianites as enemies and kill them because they treated you as enemies when they deceived you in the affair of Peor and their sister, Cosby, the daughter of the Midianite leader, the woman who was killed when the plague came as a result of Peor. Amen. That was Numbers 24 and 25. Now we're going to move on to Luke 1, verses 57 through 220. Luke 1, 57. Through 2 of 22. 20.
In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel up to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. I already read this. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong arrow. Sorry. Mm, no. Yep. I'm looking at the wrong arrow. Sorry. Um, 57. Here's verse 57. When it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy and they shared her joy. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child and they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. But his mother spoke up and said, no, he is to be called John. They said to her, there is no one among your relatives who has that name. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet and to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, his name is John. Immediately, his mouth was opened and his tongue was loosed. And he began to speak, praising God. The neighbors were all filled with awe. And throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Everyone who heard this wondered about it, asking, What then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. His father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come and has redeemed his people. He has raided up a horn, raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, and he lived in the desert until he appeared publicly to Israel. Jesus is born in Bethlehem. <coughs> Chapter 2 of Luke. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quine Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house of the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel. 
praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them, this child, about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary measured up all of these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Amen. Psalm 58. Do you rulers indeed speak justly? Do you judge uprightly among men? No, in your heart you devise injustice, and your hands met out violence on the earth. Might be meat out violence on the earth. Even from birth, the wicked go astray. From the womb, they are wayward and speak lies. Their venom is like a venom of a snake, like that of a cobra that has stopped its ears. That will not heed the tune of the charmer, however skillful the enchanter may be. Break the teeth in their mouths, O God. Tear out, O Lord, the fangs of the lions. Let them vanish like water that flows away when they draw the bow let their arrows be blunted like a slug melting away as it moves along like a stillborn child may they not see the sun before your pots can feel the heat of the thorns whether they be green or dry the wicked will be swept away the righteous will be glad when they are avenged when they bathe their feet in the blood of the wicked, then men will say, surely the righteous still are rewarded. Surely there is a God who judges the earth. And that was Psalm 58. Move on to Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. We just completed March 21st, 2022. Thank you for joining me and I hope you have a blessed day. See you tomorrow.